The oil sands in Alberta are a mixture of bitumen, a dark sticky substance, sand, clay and water. To extract the bitumen, the giant oil sand lumps are crushed and ground, mixed with water and processing aids such as caustic, also known as lye. And in large separation vessels, the bitumen is skimmed off and later treated and refined to produce crude oil or jet fuel. And the remaining material, the waste, is called the tailings. These tailings are deposited in huge ponds where the very fine particles refuse to settle, making water removal impossible and further drying also, even within a span of 20 to 50 years. What does this mean? With increasing bitumen production, we have increased volumes of these tailings. And for our future generation, difficulty with this liquid material, reclamation impossible. As a result, in 2004, the Energy Resource Conservation Board required that companies develop technologies to reduce this wet material and get it dry so the land can be reclaimed. One of these technologies uses polymers, a large molecule, which binds those fine particles together, forming bigger particles, which eventually settle, release water, and these tailings can actually dry, become thicker. These tailings are called thickened tailings. These thickened tailings are later deposited into the atmosphere, where through evaporation, they dry. However, affecting the drying and the evaporation of these tailings are the thickness of the layer, the salts contained in the pore water, to name a few. This is where my research comes in, understanding the evaporative behavior of these tailings. By simulating deposition of multiple layers in the laboratory, I was able to study this behavior. My key findings indicate one, when water is driven to the surface during evaporation, the salts left behind from the water actually block the pores. Can you imagine boiling salt water and seeing those crystals? They block the pores, preventing water from leaving. Two, at the surface, a dry layer forms, and this dry layer prevents water from leaving the soil. Three, once cracking forms, though, in this dry layer, wet underlying material is exposed, a new path for water to leave the soil. Evaporation rate increases, drying continues, and the material gets drier. Well, to oil sand operators in Alberta, these results lend very important details. As to one, whether salt should be removed before deposition, two, when to deposit the next layer, three, how to use cracking to facilitate the drying. All in the quest to attain dry land that can be reclaimed, making the future brighter for your children and my children. Thank you.